Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now, up till now, I, I was discussing different aspects uh, the, of the biochemical engineering, and uh, now, but today, I am going to discuss a very new topic that is uh, operation of industrial fermenter and the material analysis. Because whatever, whatever uh, we have covered up till now. That, uh, that try to understand how, how we can analyze the process. Now, this is regarding application of that because how when we apply it in the fermenter, how the industrial process that is in operation. So, so this will give you uh, the information that uh, how the industrial fermenter is, um, uh, is operated and uh, how, you, uh, how we can do the material analysis. So, I hope this, uh, this particular lecture will be very useful for you. And first, let me start with uh, this uh, the schematic diagram of the fermenter. If you look at the fermenter, that you know that fermenter. This is the I I told you two type of things that we have rea we have reacted. Am I right? What is the reactor? How you define reactor? Reactor is a vessel in which the reaction takes place. Now we have in biochemical industry we have bioreactor. What is bioreactor? Bioreactor also same thing that in the in the vessel in which the reaction takes place with the help of some biomolecules. That is why we call it bioreactor. So only the difference between the chemical and biochemical bioreactor and chemical reactor is that in the bioreactor mostly we shall have to we are more concerned about the sterility of the reactor. But in the chemical process, they are not very much uh, uh, careful about the sterility of the uh, reactor. That is not that doesn't play a very important role. So this is the this is the this is the main constant that we have. Now let us see what are the other things that we have. Now here I told you this is the agitator sap. Am I right? This is called agitator sap, and I told you this should be perfectly straight. And there in the world. There will be hardly two three companies they manufacture this uh, the, the sap. There this should be perfectly straight. Now here the major problem that we have here this is the connection between the top of the lid and the uh, and the sap because there we put some kind of mechanical seal. What you call mechanical seal and the mechanical seal is a uh, we we put in a manner so that no air can enter into the system. That is the, that is why we go you because air presents lot of microorganisms. If we, we allow the air to enter into the system, then contamination will take place. Now, <coughs> there are other other lot of uh, things that we have that we have some temper that that you know this is impeller. I have already discussed this impeller that is attached with the shaft for the starting purpose and different height we still have to provide this because because why the, to make the uh, mixture perfectly homogeneous in nature, and then um, uh, the another very important thing is the temperature. You have to maintain the temperature. How we uh, for maintaining temperature, two things we shall have to do uh, by passing the. You can pass the uh, by heating hot water or cold water through which you can maintain the temperature because you since you are using the starter, if you move and move the starter at high velocity. Then it, we can assume the heat transfer will be very uh, good, and, and you know that you know the temperature can be maintained. So this is at the, uh, the, the this is the temperature recorder we have uh, from where we can maintain the temperature. So here uh, this is connected with the controller. So if the temperature rises, the chilled water uh, that pipeline that uh, that pump will be on, and it will bring the chilled water. Uh, to, uh, to reduce the temperature, if temperature is low, then uh, hot water pump will be on, and uh, hot water will be circulated through the uh, jacket. This is jacket. Now, uh, one thing I want to tell you that th this kind of jacket is not used by the industry. Uh, what do we use in the industry? Because this is the vessel. This is the 
So, what we what we use we we put some kind of you know that tubes like this, which we we we, we the, the pipe the wrap around the surface of the uh, of the reactor. So that you when you pass the water, then it uh, you ensure that water is circulating through through the periphery of the uh, uh, this reactor. But when you pass the liquid here, suppose there is some kind of deposition here due to some other reason, so the the, the water will, will do the have the channeling effect. If the channeling effect is there, then the 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 temperature control will be a problem. So this is this is the one of the reasons why we we use the uh, that pipe uh, we wrap around the surface of the reactor. So and for heating, we sometimes we use the steam, sometimes we use the hot water, and uh, and uh, here you can use the sampling purpose. This uh, this portion is very interesting in the lab. Uh, how we can do the sampling? We can in the lab we can do the sampling very easily because there is a outgoing uh, that uh, air outlet. You know, am I right? The, in the exhaust, this is the exhaust line. Now here in this exhaust line, if you valve, if you close this valve, then there will be a, a pressure here, air pressure here, and due to the air pressure, the uh, automatically if you open this valve, open this valve, then you can draw the sample and collect the sample, and uh, this you can do it very easily. So here we have here you see that uh, we are uh, this is uh, this some kind of pH probe is there is connected here dissolved oxygen probe that will be connecting here then air filter is there air filter we for air sterilization purpose this is the air flow recorder we record this flow rate how we maintain the air flow by using rotameters that we can find out what is the flow rate of air and then we can we have, this is a sparger that we have. So, you know that and then and after the fermentation is over, then we, we, we draw the sample like this through the harvesting the pipeline. Now, here I want to point out the different type of valve we use, this is the you can this is the valve and the same type of valve is not used for the all purpose. As for example, for harvesting we always use the gate valve, am I right? And in case of sampling, suppose in the sampling of what we use, we use ball valve. Because the, why ball valve? Because we can instantaneously open and instantaneously you can close. That is why you can use that. So this is a, this is a kind of this is the pH recorder with the help of pH probe. You can this is connected with the recorder. You can you can you can record that that you know by pH. So this is the again connected with acid tank and alkali tank. So as the suppose you set a particular pH uh, pH seven. So, if you, if you neutral you want to operate, so if the pH increases then the pump connected with the uh, acid tank, suppose this is acid and uh, this is alkali. So, uh, this acid uh, pump connected with this acid that will be on and this will take the liquid that will acid in to increase the decrease the temperature. Now, to decrease the pH. Now, if the pH is less then it is uh, connected with the pump is connected with the alkali tank that will be on and bring it to um, to increase the uh, pH. So, this is how we can control the different operational parameter in the in the in the in the fermenter. Now, this is the in the laboratory because uh, uh, how we operate uh, because in a, I am in I am from IIT Kharagpur we have uh, bioengineering AG fermenter this is bioengineering AG this is the control module this is called control module what is the purpose of the control module is to is to uh, is to uh, call he has the con different type of control uh, controllers we have and recorder different type of recorder different type of controllers we can so we can monitor that what is going on inside the reactor that we have different type of sensor here with the help of sensor and probe we can monitor as for example temperature we use uh, some kind of thermistor that is connected and that we find out how much temperature is there we have ph probe that measure the ph we have dissolved oxygen probe we measure the uh, um, that dissolved oxygen concentration in the uh, fermentation liquid 
So, um, the, these are all plays very important role. So, here you can see that the different, uh, different uh, things that we have, we have exhaust air filter that is one um, that you can see this is exhaust air filter. Now, question comes why we put the air filter at the exhaust? The reason is that, that when suppose you are running a fermenter, then all of a sudden the power is off, then there is every possibility that air present in the uh, air, air can enter into the exhaust line and enter into this fermentation fermenter. And if you enter into the fermenter, your fermentation will be spoiled. So, we, we want to have exhaust filter, then we have safety valve because this is the safety valve that we have because the some other reason if you pressure increases there is every possibility of some kind kind of disaster that can be avoided we have safety jacket because in the lab <coughs> this uh, this is made of glass so if it is made of glass and two type of sterilization technique we have one is called in situ and the in vitro so in situ means that the fermenter wherever it is located here itself we we do the sterilization and uh, we know for sterilization, we shall have to maintain the temperature 121 degrees centigrade and for that, we shall have to increase the steam pressure to 15 psi. So, uh, to increase the, so somehow that if the, if the pressure of the steam increases, that cause may cause some kind of disaster. To avoid that, we put some kind of uh, jacket here, the steam the stainless steel jacket we put across this fermenter so that even some dive the bar if, if your glass uh, vessel burst it will not affect you very much then you have this uh, glass cylinder is the reactor cooling finger used for cooling purpose cooling water inlet cooling water outlet and turbo starter then the, then starting shaft heating finger to a temperature probe uh, then high hypodermic needle for aseptic uh, temporary that you know sampling purpose we can do that the non return valve this is very important because the non return valve which is located here you can see that why the non return valve is requ is required here non return valve means valve looks like this so here is it like this it can go one direction it cannot come other direction the one direction so, so, why it is like this, suppose if there is a power failure, then, uh, then if, the, if the liquid uh, due to, uh, comes out uh, due to some other reason and, and then here you have filtered and if, you, if your liquid comprises of lot of organic material, if you enter into the filter, then filter will be spoiled and uh, because it will be contaminated. So, your air cannot be sterilized. So, to avoid that, we should have uh, this uh, you know, non-return valve or one-way valve then aeration tube, then air inlet filter and harvesting valve and bearing, bearing is required uh, for any kind of moving sap to as you know that we require bearing, leakage curve and motor. But uh, one thing I think it is not mentioned here that here we use uh, another thing that is we call um, that uh, foam controller. We have foam sensor that you know we insert here that you know that uh, as soon as foam formation is there that is the normal characteristics of the fermentation process that is touch the foam then it is connected with a tank of anti foam oil as it will take the anti foam oil and put it in the reactor so that foam will subside so this is how uh, the, the things is operated now industrial fermenter looks like that this is the uh, the bigger form of lack fermentation process this is this is the mechanical seal i was telling you that you know this is the this is the very uh, the very important portion uh, through which we can uh, we can have the contamination. So this should be properly designed, and this is the watching glass. You can say that uh, the the big fermenter we have two watching glass. One this way, another is other way. One way you can put the light, another way you can see that exactly what is happening in the fermenter. So you can have you can see the anti foam oil tanker and other things that is located here. Different other things that is located here similar to your lab fermentation process. Now, let, uh, let, us, uh, let us give you some information about the different accessories that we have in the fermenters. That first is the fermentation vessel, am I right? The function of the fermenter is to carry out the appropriate aseptic and predefined environmental conditions. 
a fermentation vessel is designed in such a way it requires the minimum labor of operation and maintenance that uh, the volume capacity range from 1 to 2 liters in the lab scale and 50 to 10 uh, 1000 liter pilo scale and several thousand liters capacity in the industrial industrial scale so different capacity that we have uh, required and main purpose main uh, main thing that we shall have to consider that minimal labor operation and maintenance particularly i want to point out that uh, that uh, material of construction should be such there should not be any kind of damage to the surface of the material of construction and most of the material is uh, made of uh, stainless steel and different type of stainless steel as you know that is available in the market one is ss314 one is ss316 one is ss317 the different type of depending on your requirement because in fermentation industry we usually go for ss316 now material of uh, construction is should, should be flexible and durable that i told you noxing non toxic and to the reactant and product because whatever in the media whatever component is there that should not react with the material of construction resistance to chemicals and metabolic products by the organism resistance to weathering that low cost and available it should be available and easy to fabricate and corrosion proof as for example because i was because i told you i told you the stainless steel usually uh, used for as a material of construction what is stainless steel stainless steel is called alloy steel that is a mixture of metals so iron with iron we mix with different metals that makes a stainless steel so it has been found if the alloy steel stainless steel content 12% of chromium it prevents the corrosion not only that if you have suppose i work with citric acid industry and citric acid is more corrosive to the material of construction so we can go for a little bit higher in that case we add some kind of molybdenum to have the more acid resistant property of the stainless steel now the nickel uh, that is give the the uh, uh, stenitic structure or stenitic structure means this is the smoothness of the structure the if the if the material of construction is not smooth then what will happen the organism may grow on the surface of the uh, of the uh, reactor and uh, your 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 process will be hampered so that is undesirable and high high transparency or for for photovoltaic reactor uh, not for the all reactor for to be a reactor we, we we require the polycarbonate material we use because polycarbonate your transparency will be more high so this is how the material of construction we can we can we can we can choose now uh, construction of material differ from the small scale from the small scale small scale pilot scale and the large scale and i told you that we have different type of stainless steel that we have uh, this is uh, 301 30l the 316 316L and 316SS317 for the small process and for stainless steel this is uh, we use the th this uh, this same thing we more or less we use and mild steel coated with the uh, epoxy material epoxy we know epoxy is kind of uh, it protect the acid and H2S uh, effect that can be uh, can get with that we can protect the the mild steel from that there is sometime we use the epoxy coating material with the mild steel and wood and plastic and concrete of pilot uh, and large scale we use this is uh, some cases we use most but mostly as i told you mostly we prefer the stainless steel material now next uh, that very important uh, that i already discussed the impellers this impellers is looks like this and you see that this is the this is called disc this is disc and this is the blade am i right and you can remember i told you this number of blades uh, that uh, this kind of disc we have at different height and this uh, we have seen this number of blades very plays very important role uh, in the vibration of the fermenter 
the in the in the industry we shall have to walk or do the trial error just to optimize the number of blade in the disk that uh, device is used for the agitation and mixing and create uniform in environment uh, in 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 the in the media in the media it leads the suspension of the solid particles bulk fluid and gas uh, phase uh, mixing there are various type of impellers disc turbine anchor and marine propeller i have i already discussed uh, so i don't like to repeat it again then this is the different type of spar jet because spar jet just to uh, you have a porous plate type this is multiple uh, uh, that uh, the orifice nozzle and single nozzle type the different type of uh, three different type of aeration uh, that uh, things we required that we put at the bottom of the uh, of the fermenter now baffle baffle i told told you you can you can hear you can see this is the baffle am i right this is the baffle and why we use the baffle to stop the vortex i i i mentioned you that suppose you you do the agitation if you don't use the baffle it will be like this now if you in the in the reactor if you have baffles like this and you have a agitator then your level is like this so there should not be any kind of any kind of vortex formation and this is desirable so this is the purpose why you use the baffle now in case of uh, sometimes we in the big fermenter this we use the hollow type of baffles where why we use hollow because we we use for cooling purpose because we pass the water through this because in the well, since we are in the tropical country then in the in the summer temperature of the environment rises to a great extent so we require more cooling effect so we use the baffle for cooling purpose so that is that is why we use so so this is the this is the the metal strip attached with the wall of the fermentation of the baffle uh, they are used to prevent the vortex to improve the aeration capacity they are at 90 degree with the wall of the fermentation vessel baffle remains maintain a gap between them and and the vessel uh, wall is enabled to squaring souring this uh, then uh, action and thus minimizing the microbial growth on the wall of the fermenter so this is the this is how the baffles is uh, why the baffles is we have in this and other things that we have with the fermentation industry the compressor this is to supply air that you know this is the uh, this is how the compressor looks it gives very very big noise uh, in the fermenter uh, in fermentation industry and then we have rotameter rotameter so it looks like this and this is uh, this is rotameter is used easily used for low flow rate a device to measure the flow rate of the fluid uh, uh, the closed tube by allowing the cross section area and the fluid travels through a to vary the causing the um, measurable effect now here we can this is the this is the this, this this the knob by opening and closing we can control the flow rate of air that can be done very easily this is the rotameter is easy to handle this is the, the air filter that we have i have already discussed the air sterilization process we use the for air filter we use the fibrous type of material particularly we use the glass wool glass wool fiber we use fiber we use uh, as a for uh, for air sterilization purpose remove the solid particles dust pollen molds and bacteria from the air we i to i was talking about non return valve non return valve is look, looking like this it goes one direction you can see that they have given the direction the liquid cannot flow cannot go flow this direction so only it can flow one direction that is why we call it non return valve then we have reflux cooler that uh, i told you why the reflux cooler is there that is also we should understand that why we reflux cooler is there because because in the fermenter this suppose this is a fermenter and now what we are doing we are sparging air am i right we are we are passing air air in and this is the this is the this is the thing and air this is the air out now what is happening when 
Here you are sparging, your air is uh, not saturated, it is unsaturated, but when you spark this, this through this, it, it will be saturated. So, when it, it takes some kind of moisture from the fermenter. So, you will find if you, if you allow the air to go out like this, you will find with respect to time, the volume of the uh, liquid volume of the fermenter will keep on decreasing. So, what we do, we put a condenser here. So, that you know that whatever uh, um, the vapor is going down that should be condensed back to the fermenters. So, this uh, this is what we the exhaust air filter is there. We I told you to avoid the contamination that we can use that. Then uh, we have temperature controller device, we have heaters, uh, we, we can have heaters, we can have uh, cooler, cool, cool finger that we different type of uh, arrangement we can have. Then this is the feed and sample port that I, I showed you with the, if you increase the pressure, air pressure, you can automatically draw the sample again uh, and close the valve. But this is how we can do, the, the, so this is, uh, this is the tubes and pipelines uh, and the, the uh, connected with the nutrition reservoir. And this should be valve is, uh, I told you this ball valve we use just to which can be instantaneously open and instantaneously close. And, and uh, these tubes or pipelines are used adding nutrients, sometimes is a use for adding the nutrient also, acid and alkali for before um, and during the fermentation process, sampling port, sample taken out for analysis and heat uh, sterilization in situ on X, X C2. With, with steam, that is uh, that is what we use here. Now, uh, flow regulation, we have, uh, if you look at flow regulation and control, we have safety valve, I told you safety valve located at the top of the fermenter, just to if you somehow the pressure build up take place, so that before it uh, causes any kind of damage, it, uh, the safety valve will blow, so that the the air will go out like this, so that you know that the damage can be avoided. We have globe valve, we have butterfly valve, different type of valve with that. Globe valve is looks like this. This is mostly used in the water basin. You can see that we clo you know, slowly, slowly you can open, slowly, slowly you can close. But butterfly valve can be used uh, in for sampling purpose also, along with the ball valve. This you can instantaneously open and instantaneously you can close. Now, this is the ball valve that I was talking about. This is used largely for sampling purpose. The assay when assay precondition required can be operated at a high temperature. Diaphragm valve also it can be used for sampling purpose. Then we have sealing at assembly. This is the mechanical seal. I, I, I was telling about that this mechanical seal which is located at the top of the fermenter that plays very important role, so that air from outside cannot, should not uh, enter into the system, that, that plays very important role. Now, packed gland inside, inside this, uh, 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 that uh, inside this, uh, that uh, mechanical seal, we have some packing material that, uh, that is shown here, this is the sap that we have. The several layers of ring made of asbestos are used as a seal to seal the sap, uh, periodically monitoring and replacement. Only one thing I want to highlight that if this is a mechanical seal, then in, in case of biochemical industry, we put some kind of um, uh, line, so that we can pa pass the anti-foam oil, anti-foam oil. Uh, and you know, this, this is sterilized anti-foam oil with the help of pump, we, we put it inside and, um, and just to lubricate the sap. And if we lubricate the sap, the friction across the mechanical seal will be less. And since we are passing at the high velocity, so there will be always a positive pressure. And if there is a positive pressure, no air can enter into the system. That is why we use the magnetic drive. Now it is used to avoid any kind of contamination problem. So this is another and the recent development we have. Then for monitoring, we required the pH probe. I told you. Whenever you use any kind of probe, first you have to calibrate 
the pH probe whenever used we first we shall have to calib calibrate with respect to our uh, standard uh, pH uh, that is uh, the pH solution and uh, temperature probe also uh, that is uh, that is the uh, temperature is the uh, culture is measured and this is made of bimetallic and we know that bimetallic it is not like uh, mercury uh, thermometer through which the method that the temperature is a bimetallic through the resistance uh, difference in the resistance we measured the temperature. Now, dissolved oxygen probe that is also used for measuring the dissolved oxygen foam control I told you this is the sharp needle that uh, that uh, that is present at the top of the fermenter which is just when your foam touch uh, uh, suppose uh, this is the foam touch here then it is connected with uh, with uh, some uh, your pump is connected with some anti foam oil tanker and it will draw the uh, draw the liquid anti foam oil anti foam oil and it will it will it will take the liquid and put it in the fermenter to subside the uh, foam that is uh, how the foam control take place so uh, the this is the different type of uh, this is the summary of the uh, uh, the different parts that present in the fermenter this is the function of the fermenter i don't like to go in details again i already explained and this is the different parts uh, uh, that is explained here so this is kind of repetition of that now uh, that um, one important thing is the material analysis of the process that uh, that is the first we shall have to prepare the flow diagram this is the flow diagram of the process that you know this is the uh, i have given the examples of the citric acid fermentation process where cane molasses is used as a raw material and uh, here this is first is stored in the middle of molasses storing storing storage tank then it this is located at the gate of the industry but the molasses measuring tank is located at the fermenter fermentation plant and then this from this uh, you take the desired amount of cane molasses here then we this contains about the 50% of sugar we dilute it with the water and with the nutrient and then we mix thoroughly uh, before it passes through the sterilizer and then after sterilization we take it in the this is the inoculum vessel inoculum vessel for preparation of the culture and this is the production fermenter for production of the media and this is the air sterilizer i told you the capacity of the air sterilizer is 10 times higher uh, in production fermenter as compared to the inoculum vessel and after the fermentation is over you take the harvesting tank this is all the and it contains the cell mass also so first you have to remove the cell mass with the help of um, rotating uh, uh, disk uh, biology uh, that uh, rotary vacuum filter a uh, rotary vacuum filter we use rvf then we we get the uh, solid material cell we can burn it and 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 we can get the energy or um, and then the liquid material we take it and store it as a filter reservoir then we pass it through the uh, purification unit for purification of the product now let us see how we can do the ana the analysis of this process suppose unaerated uh, unaerated fermented field volume in the batch fermentation process is 200 cubic meter and sugar concentration is 200 g per liter then uh, this 200 g per liter so i i have already showed you that how you can convert the unit this i can write that uh, if you want to convert into kg so have what i can write that uh, how you can convert to kg that uh, 1 kg is equal to how much 1000 g so gram gram will cancel then you can convert to kg the liter you can co convert to cubic meter how we can convert to cubic meter the cubic meter 1 cubic meter is how much 1000 liter the liter liter will cancel so 100 1000 1000 will cancel that means that uh, 20 g per liter is equal to 20 kg per cubic meter you can write like this so sugar input we can easily calculate we know that mm, that uh, 200 cubic meter so if you multiply that we will get the 40 mm, metric tons of sugar now Uh, carbon that you know that every industry when we work with any kind of industry that we have two type of 
analytical device for finding out the product concentration. One is a very, very fast analyzing device and another is exact analysis of your product. So, we have seen most of the, if you want to determine the product concentration, exact product concentration always it take lot of time, particularly for citric acid estimation, it takes more than one time, one year, one day. So, we, what we do in the industry that we have a titration method with respect to uh, dilute uh, sodium hydroxide solution by using methyl orange as indicator. We find out how much sodium hydroxide is required to uh, consume that you know the, the sodium hydroxide solution and that is co co correlated with total acid yield. And then from that we can find out and, and that is why you can see that we have a ratio of citric acid and total acid yield. So, now total acid as the 250 degree centigrade is uh, 14 point uh, and uh, this uh, this uh, 14.82 percent weight by volume when that means 1.48.2 kg per cubic meter. So, you can easily find out that uh, what is the in terms of metric tons per cubic meter and also similarly if you know the concentration of citric acid you can find out in metric tons. So, if you multiply it by 200 cubic meter you can easily find out how much metric ton of citric acid is produced by your industry. This is how we can we can do the material analysis in your say in your in your in your production parameter. Then, then as the suppose your downtime is uh, downtime is 12 hours and uh, and uh, and time of fermentation is uh, uh, is suppose 140 hours. So total time will be 140 plus 12 hours. That will be total time. Then now how we can calculate the yield, the metric tons. Uh, this is the metric tons of the total acid, and this is the metric tons of sugar yield. Uh, sugar that is input in the system, then do we calculate the 74.1 percent. The conversion efficiency any kind of industry plays very important role. Similarly, the citric acid available in two different forms, one is CAM, another is uh, citric acid anhydrides. Now, CAM, if, if we have already seen the CAM concentration is this and if this is the sugar yield, so we can easily find out. So, if you compare the total acid yield and total citric acid yield always compatible it will be less as compared to that. Now, question comes that how you can analyze the downstream processing. This is the fermentation broth then we, we treat with lime and then to just to precipitate the citric acid in the form of calcium citrate then you, pre, you filter it out you take out um, the calcium citrate then hydrolyze with sulfuric acid and then it, it, it passes through the filter, filtration process and where the gypsum calcium sulphate will be separated out. Here is the uh, your citric acid, uh, you cohesion contain lot of color, we use the activated charcoal to remove the color. Then we again do the filtration to remove the activated charcoal, then we concentrate with the help of evaporator that, eva that uh, evaporation, then after evaporation we cool it down and do the crystallization to separate the crystals and then we pass it through the centrifugation machine and finally, we dry the sample. After drying we sieving, but the crystal size will be different and then we pack it in the in the polythene, um, polythene bag. This is how you know, we can we can we can we can do that. Now, question come how we can do the uh, the material analysis of the process. Now, for citric acid calcium citrate uh, the citric calcium citrate citrate formation how much lime is required. Now, as you know the lime is produced this calcium hydroxide is produced from where calcium oxide. Uh, this is the H2O is gives like this. Now, how calcium oxide is formed from calcium carbonate. If you calcium carbonate if you heat it, if it will go calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, this, uh, this is available in the uh, in the mines. So, uh, this is uh, you can easily calculate that how much uh, uh, if you know the stoichiometry you can find out how much calcium lime is required and if, uh, if you know how much calcium citrate is formed you can find out how much acid is pr pr required and if you if you know this how much acid is required you can you can also find out how much gypsum is this is called gypsum. Gypsum is produced which is a good ingredients for the cement cement producing industry. 
So, this is how we can do the material analysis and this is the two problems I have uh, given here. I hope you can you can do it by yourself the, since time um, I have little less. So, I, I am just leaving it to you just you you solve try to calculate by yourself I hope you will understand that. Now, so in conclusion I want to point out that, uh, that how I try to give you the glimpse how the fermentation industrial fermentation processes uh, are operated and what are the different accessories present in the fermentation process and main uh, our main criteria is to maintain the sterility of the system so that no contaminants can inside uh, uh, can enter into the system and how the temperature how the pH how the dissolved oxygen concentration can be monitored how the sample can be drawn by the fermenter all these things I, I try to point out and finally I try to show you this material analysis with respect to citric acid fermentation process. Thank you very much.